Hey guys, I'm back and this time I'm back with backups and recovery introduction video. I hope all of you are doing well and uh, I'm excited to be back after pause of probably one month or so. Uh, I've been quite busy with a lot of things these days. So yeah, coming back to the major thing which is uh, the topic for today's presentation and it is backups and recovery. Well. Backup refers to making copies of data so that the copies may be used to restore the original data once there is a data loss event. In this video, I am majorly going to play my focus on telling you what backups are and what types of backups we usually have in market. Talking about tools, there are n number of backup tools in the market and every tool has some or the other kind of functionality that every company brings in with them for us to choose depending upon the kind of architecture we will be having in our environment. The most commonly used tools are, you know, net backup. Semantic net backup, Veritas net backup, uh, the companies keep on changing. Uh, so, but net backup is one big and vast tool which is mostly used. Then we have some of the EMC products also uh, that can be used for uh, backups, which include Networker, Evermar, and so on. Coming back to what backup is and what backup technologies are, it's like backup refers to making copies of data. Right? So, you know, not backing up is a lot like wearing a seat belt. You can go months without backups and it won't matter. But the moment there's a disaster, then you will have nothing to recover your data from. So backups are useful primarily for restoring a state following a disaster or restoring, you know, small number of files or some important files that you accidentally probably deleted. Before the data gets onto the backup devices, it must be extracted from the system. So there are various techniques for doing that and they include by dealing with open files, live data sources, including compression, encryption, deduplication. So much has come in the market that picking every topic in itself would cause me a lecture of more than half an hour. Coming down to types of backup, majorly that are there are full backups, differential backups, incremental backups and synthetic backups. Now I'm going to talk in basic detailing about each of these going forth in my next uh, slides. But uh, so primarily, you know, this is the major chunk how backups can be divided and uh, how your architectures can be decided based on your requirements for data. Starting with the full backup because it is the easiest one and as the name suggests a full backup makes a copy of all data from the selected partition to the destination storage. Each full backup will consist of a previous full backup and new data that appeared so far. Full backup is a basis for each other backup type that we'll be talking about in my next slides. The pros of full backup is it is easy to set up. You simply choose the entire thing and ask the uh, tool that you're using to back it up. It is reliable. So, you know, you're just mirroring everything to an other side. And uh, once your uh, current data lo loses, you can just go and ask that entire data to come, you know, restored back. And, but it does have some cons because it is full backup and every time you run it, it is going to take everything from that particular uh, source file or source server. Uh, so it's long. And of course, because it's taking the entire stuff from a particular source server or source file, then it is going to consume a lot of storage space too. Now backups are, uh, you know, these days taken on a lot of things. Earlier it was just tapes that were used for backups. But with the growing technologies, we came up with uh, the idea of virtual tape libraries, disk-based backups, Veritas appliances, EMC data domain. Uh, you can also dump your backup on EMC storage tools or any other storage tools basically. So a lot of, lot of things have changed in backups over last few years. 
backups can be integrated with your Oracle databases or your SQL databases. You can also take backup for flat file systems, a separate snapshot backup for VMs. So backup has evolved to a large extent in the last few years. Now coming to the next kind of backup, which is differential backup. Now understand from this image, what is a differential backup? A, differ a differential backup happens after a full or another differential backup. So every differential backup will run and generate a restore point and content consists of changes made since last full backup. Say for example, you've had a full backup today and you run normal incremental backups that I'll explain in my next slide tomorrow, day after tomorrow. And the very next day, for example, today is Sunday and your incremental backup runs on Monday and your Tuesday and it is just saving the changes from Sunday. So your Wednesday backup will be your differential backup, which is also known as cumulative backup, is not going to backup changes from Tuesday but it is going to back up all the changes in the backup uh, from the source server from the last full backup which was on Sunday. So a differential backup essentially also known as a cumulative backup will back up all the changes that have happened on the source side from last full backup to this differential backup or from the last differential backup only to this differential backup. The pros are that obviously it is less space consuming because it is only storing the changes from last full or differential backup to this current differential backup. It's reliable in comparison to the next kind of backup which is incremental backup which we'll be talking about because it consists of all changes from last particular full backup. But the cons are that uh, you know storage consum consumption is not very effective in the long run because every database rolls subsequent changes after the initial one and that can cause duplicated data but we have some deduplication stuff in but differential backup does not serve that purpose because we always ask it to back everything up that has changed from last full backup and restore is a painful uh, process if you know you get a full system restore because you have to restore the full backup that ever happened before this and then restore this one restoring only the differential backup is not going to bring your uh, entire system back in case of all data loss so in the image you can see that uh, you know you take a full backup which is a b c d e f and then the first differential happens it just takes the changes from last full backup, which is just adding of block B maybe. Then you add block C also, and your next differential will restore everything from last full backup, which happened like two days back. So it will again backup B and then C. Talking about incremental backup. Incremental backup, just as differential backup, is a way of uploading only the changed or modified files to the storage system. But the difference between incremental and differential is that incremental backup only stores the changes since last any backup. So uh, I put incremental here because that's the you know most uh, uh, you can say the smallest size of backup you might have for any particular server. So an incremental backup will only store the changes from last backup. It can be your last backup could be your incremental backup, your cumulative or differential backup, or even your full backup. So this one is only going to have the changes done. The pros are that it uses very less space on storage in comparison to the cumulative and the full backups. It is faster than full backup because obviously it is storing less data. The cons are that uh, for example, say that, uh, you know, you have uh, planned your backup schedules and you said, you know, because, you know, this uh, this guy is less space consuming and all and I'm going to just, you know, back up only different incremental stuff and you don't even set up a full backup. So tomorrow, if you lose one of your incremental backup files or data, 
then your entire incremental backup uh, images are of no use because they were always dependent on the changes on the previous one so you might not have uh, like say i backed up abc on wednesday c changed a bit on thursday i stored that and i added d on friday but i lost that c changes thursday's data so when i restore it later i will never have what c changed to so essentially when you have it is always suggested to have one full backup scheduled at least once a week so that even if you lose something on the incremental front you at least have a full backup image to take back you to the main data because at the end of the day the only purpose of backup is to serve you when your data lo is lost coming to synthetic full backup now essentially this was a breakthrough in backup technology because synthetic full backup works just like incremental it backs only the change file from the last storage but it merges itself to get the full backup and the changes since the full backup so this kind of backup like while the active full backup brings 100% of the data from source a synthetic full backup can change this by creating an entire point reusing the existing data in backup full backup and just storing the changes so what this is going to do is this is going to backup the changed data and make a pointer to the previous full backup so when you restore only from the synthetic full backup you will be able to restore the entire system up from this one image why because it already has a pointer to its last full backup essentially uh, the pros are that it's faster you can use it in low bandwidth networks and it uses less bandwidth obviously but the cons are that it makes a track file on your source server so it is going to basically use your source server space which other types of backups do not so i've tried to explain the entire process with this image which i got uh, somewhere online and i just loved it whoever has made this image has done good amounts of work so from this image you will get an idea about what the full backup looked like how incremental just took up the changed blocks and how synthetic basically just picked the changed blocks and uh, made a pointer to the full backup so uh, on and all i've just got this summary uh, table of all kinds of backups a full backup backs all data it takes a lot of time to backup the restore time however is fast and it consumes a lot of storage space incremental backup only takes the new or the modified files or folders it is fast the restore time however is not so fast because to restore an incremental backup you might need some full backup images in the past and the storage space it takes is the lowest in comparison to other types of backups differential backup or cumulative backup it takes all data since the last full backup the backup time is moderate restore time is fast and storage space it uses is also moderate because it's not taking full backup but it's not even taking incremental mirror backup which is also known as synthetic backup takes only the new and modified files and folders makes a pointer to your last full backup it is fast because it's using the pointer technology and restore is too is very fast and it also takes a lot of uh, space because it's using the client space as well so ending it on a very uh, you know everyday kind of note and it says that always have a backup plan in your life in technology in your architecture and whatever technical plans you make if you like the video please like and share it and uh, i am very open to the feedbacks you can come back to me with a lot of feedbacks and i'll be happy to actually uh, put them in my videos and talk to you guys you can connect me on my email which is techgirl2359 at gmail.com 
and my video also has links to my Facebook ID and my Facebook page where also you can connect to me and yes I have a news I'm surely surely going to come back with my face reveal of uh, sometime soon when I think I'm ready and I have delivered enough stuff for people to like uh, it and uh, to give me positive feedbacks in fact I'm welcoming with negative feedbacks also and I will just like to you know uh, get this shared and spread this as much as possible come up with more ideas tell me what you want me to take up but please understand that you know I can't have some bulky videos where I will explain every technology from A to Z because that's very time-consuming and boring uh, Probably one person would want that but not the other hundreds. So come up with some brilliant good ideas for me to uh, you know bring out the best that is